but for me personally I was tired of going to a therapist who first of all didn't want to deal with what I needed to deal with I needed somebody who was experienced who was not going to be afraid of the issues and I'm not saying my second therapist was afraid of them she just didn't want to have to deal with them um, and that's a whole different situation um, in fact I've had many people since then say that they went to the same therapist and that she absolutely refused to deal with specific issues uh, specific issues of uh, DID she actually refused to acknowledge um, any alters or any insiders um, and so that is actually not helpful to somebody who goes to her who has um, some of those issues or has instances of that happening during you know while they're talking about abuse um, so that actually is very important um, when I went to uh, this therapist I actually went I actually interviewed therapist over the phone before I even decided to make an appointment with somebody that's how strongly that I felt about it and you know what you have every right to do that um, let's see first of all you can ask other survivors for recommendations I wrote some things down because I knew I wasn't going to remember all this but I think it's an important subject so I wanted to talk about it you can ask other survivors for recommendations um, you can do preliminary screenings most therapists will allow you to take 10 to 15 minutes to um, talk to them in a preliminary screening over the telephone it's perfectly okay to do that um, this um, allows you to ask specific questions that are important to you um, important issues to find out what they deal with um, take the time to do that and actually do that with several therapists or people that you're you're wanting to go see and write down the information and then compare before making a choice I wanted to tell you one of the things that was very very helpful to me is um, these two books and I think I've mentioned these before but the courage to heal it has a section in here that has um, uh, it's it's a whole chapter on counseling and it gives you um, specifics as as far as like finding a counselor and um, it gives you specific questions to ask um, that's important to you first of one of the, some of the things that was important to me well before I get to that let me tell you about this other book too and I've mentioned this as well this actually goes into a little bit more detail safe passage to healing a guide for survivors of ritual abuse Christine Oksana there is a whole chapter in here as well about asking specific questions or how to find uh, resources and ask good questions and finding a good therapist um, very 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 helpful to me and that is actually what gave me the idea to interview a um, therapist ahead of time um, before I even decided to go to him because I wanted my money and time to count for something I wanted to make sure that we were going to make progress I wanted to make sure that I was not wasting my money I wanted to make sure that I was not going to waste my time or the therapist's time um, so that was important to me one of the major things that I ask um, when I found my last therapist was I interviewed her over the telephone I wanted to know if she was familiar with childhood sexual abuse particularly incest I wanted to know whether she was familiar with ritual abuse because that was an extremely important subject to me because that is specifically why I was going I wanted to know if she had um, um, clients who were ritual abuse survivors and what types of therapy modalities did she use did she use hypnosis did she use whatever because I really wasn't interested in hypnosis I've heard all the bad things and of course there's the big heyday stuff of you know well false memory syndrome false memory syndrome so you know what I um, but I wanted to make sure that I 
went to somebody who was not going to try to hypnotize me uh, because I wanted to maintain all control. That was very important to me. I wanted to make sure that we would be able to work on the ritual abuse and that it was not going to be um, scary for her. I'll tell you this, a lot of therapists won't admit this and you'll and um, I've heard of this a lot, I've never had the experience, but um, they may tell you that they work with a particular um, thing like ritual abuse and then they get in there and they don't have absolutely any experience. So that's why it was important to me to ask, do you have clients right now or previously that you have worked with that are ritual abuse survivors and what types of um, therapy modalities did you use with them? That was important to me. I also wanted to know if they were familiar with DID, MPD. I wanted to know if they um, were, how flexible that they were with, if in, a, in an emergency situation. Um, you know, if they were the type that you could call them in an emergency situation or something like that. Um, those were the types of things that were very important to me and of course all the insurance information. Um, another thing too is I ask, and I know that this won't apply to a lot of you, but it was important to me. I wanted to know if they were okay with homosexuality because I did not want to go to a therapist and tell them, you know, that I'm gay and that I'm in a relationship if they were going to say, oh no, you know, no, 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 no. We need to change you. We need to, you know, religious and all this stuff. So religious stuff, religious views, um, those are, imp those were important questions to me. Um, you can come up with your own set of questions, but as I said, those two books that I mentioned, uh, Safe Passage to Healing and The Courage to Heal, they have some excellent uh, sample questions in there that will be helpful to you. I think that that was really important to me. So I went um, after I did the preliminary screening over the telephone, and she was perfectly fine with that. She, you know, I asked her up front, I said, are you willing um, to answer a few questions for me before I come? I want to make sure that, you know, it's going to be a, you know, semi-good fit over the telephone. Um, when I went to meet my therapist, Beth, um, I felt so comfortable with her and I think a lot of it was because I did do the preliminary screening over the phone um, actually found out you know that um, she actually I don't know God was shining down me on me for this or whatever but she was actually um, gay herself so she really understood that and she um, you know, just just the spiritual views and stuff like that. It was just a really, really good fit and a good match. And she had a lot of experience working with ritual abuse survivors. She had clients that um, were, and she also worked with um, DID um, people, so had clients with that. So those are things that were really um, important to me. Um, and we made a lot of good progress. We, uh, in a relatively short time, we actually got in there. I was comfortable, started talking right away. Um, we just, there was just a good connection. Um, so, you know, you have to find what's right for you. And if you don't find it the first time, don't be afraid to search somebody else. Now, I know a lot of times when you're getting into funds and you have, um, you know, the government paying for some of you know the stuff I know that you get in situations sometimes that you know if somebody is on disability or um, you know they're really sticklers for what they will pay for and whatever but if there's any way possible that you can pay for it yourself or um, get assistance with it or even I mean try some of the women's um, battered rape crisis centers, uh, battered centers for women, um, stuff like that because